Evel Knights has just been released for Battlefield 1, the first of two night maps being added to the They Shall Not Pass DLC. That brings the DLC map count up to six, and that's going to mirror the Russian DLC. Now, if you've been following my channel, you'll know a little bit about this map already, as I've covered a lot of its progress throughout the community test environment. But there are a few differences between this finished version and the last update that I gave you some time ago. I'm going to give you a map overview today so you know what you're jumping into, and a few hints and tips as well. Some hidden features have made their way into this map. Nivelle Knights pits the French army against the German Empire during the Nivelle Offensive of 1917. This was a time where the French thought they could spring a surprise attack on the Germans and gain some good ground, but as it turned out, like many other things in World War I, things didn't go to plan. The Germans had already dug themselves in well and truly, fully structured trench lines, they had concrete pillboxes and electrical lighting that was set up to give the Germans a commanding position. The French, on the other hand, had very little time to prepare for the attacks, and their own defences were fairly basic. You had natural fires and gas lighting that was used to light up the trenches, and the trenches themselves didn't follow a strict building guideline. This is one of the first things that you're going to see reflected in the Nivelle Knights map. The German trenches are very well ordered. They open out into these proper bunker style areas and they incorporate those concrete pillboxes as sort of safety lookouts for the soldiers. The trenches are also very deep in all places, whereas the French trenches, they vary a little bit. You've got offerings of deeper locations and shallower sections as well. The electrical searchlights on the German side don't exist on the French side at all, and that makes a very clear distinction between the two halves of the map. So with both armies having their own sections here, different trench lines on either side, what do we know sits right in the middle of two sets of trenches? Of course we have No Man's Land. But even here, there are some things sitting within No Man's Land that give it some clear distinction. The area closer to the French side is littered with items breaking line of sight over to the German trenches, whereas the Germans have a little bit of a clearer view. Now both sections, either side of the central road and the bridge in the middle, offer different locations for you to capture during a round of conquest. There are two flags in no man's land. We have the ruined cathedral and that sits up on higher ground and offers some more solid cover for the team who happens to hold it at the time, whereas the Dead Steel location, which is sort of out in the open in the middle of No Man's Land, has a wrecked Char 2C behemoth in it, and it's constructed mainly of mounds of earth, which is kind of like artillery shelling coming down as exposed some of the dirt underneath. Both of these objectives are the only two neutral ones at the start of a round of conquest, with two flags in either set of trench networks already being captured for the Germans and the French teams. And that means the fight goes straight into no man's land, where that true battlefield style chaotic gameplay can really begin. You'll notice that only French tanks are wrecked in no man's land, there's quite a few of them sort of scattered around, but they're only from the French army. And this is to symbolise the constant wave of failed attacks by the French against the Germans during the Nivelle Offensive in World War I. Now, visually of course, this map looks very different to the rest of them in Battlefield 1 at the moment. I'd say it's probably one of the prettiest maps in the game, but that does affect gameplay a little bit when you turn out the lights. Close quarters infantry play is front and center on Nivelle Knights, with the trenches offering perfect battlegrounds for players who want to use shotguns and SMGs. So the assault class is fairly regular here on this new map. The No Man's Land section opens up the middle of the map more, and it offers some of the most well-lit sections because of the moonlight that's shining down across the flatter ground. And this is where the medics and the support players will tend to do better, because their weapons can reach out a little bit further, and to an extent, the scouts can do very well here too. But where the scout will excel is at longer range, stretching right across No Man's Land from one trench line to the other. Despite the map being fairly dark, and it's darker than it was in the CTE by the way, silhouettes are fairly easy to make out against cover behind you, and you can easily see movement across the background, so you should be able to take out players who are pushing up for an objective. 
Now, besides the lighting provided on the map already, there is one thing you can do to improve your team's vision, and this is one of the hidden secrets that this map contains. DICE has added some flare rockets, which can be set off by players. These will illuminate the map a little bit more in the location that they float above. It won't be there for very long, but it does light it up a little bit, but be aware that that light will also give the enemy team a chance to see where you and your teammates are. These rockets, as I mentioned, they also spot enemy players on the minimap for a while, just like the flare gun does for the scout class, but they can only be fired on points that are neutral or in enemy hands. Their location is illuminated to let you know if you can fire one. If the lights are out, there's no rocket waiting for you. Go find the rocket location and give it a try. It does look very, very cool. The dynamic weather system in Battlefield 1 still plays a part on Nivel Nights, despite the fact that it's dark anyway. A clear sky, a light fog, or light snows are the three options, and each of these has a slightly different effect on the gameplay of the map. Clear skies means gameplay at all ranges is pretty much good to go, as long as at long range you can actually see the target that you're trying to aim for. The light fog is very low lying, it doesn't sort of rise up in the air too much, sort of sits on the ground, so that restricts longer range combat a little bit and puts further emphasis on close quarters battles. And the light snow doesn't really restrict vision at all and I think it's purely for aesthetic reasons. The Nivelle Offensive took place in the autumn and winter of 1917 and if you look under some of the tank bridges that go over the top of the trenches, if you look carefully, you can see some icicles underneath there. It's a shame you can't break one off and use it as a melee weapon like you could in Battlefield 4. Now I just mentioned tank bridges. Yes, despite the map being heavily focused on infantry play, one tank and one horse is given to each team and these spawn from the rearmost points on either side of the map. Now the vehicle that you choose will play a much more supportive role here due to the huge presence of infantry and their explosive gadgets. They're pretty dangerous so you'll want to make sure that you keep your distance and the cavalry unit is I think just there to break things up, break up the huge fights and distract people's attention or even get all the way around one of the locker heads where the two teams come together and maybe try and go and capture another objective all the way across the map. Both of these things are in there to disrupt the flow a little bit and potentially lead the battle in a different direction. The Trench Raider and the Flame Trooper Elite classes are present on this map as well, with the Trench Raider being located in a grave somewhere and the Flame Trooper in a ruined building next to the road on the French side of No Man's Land. And lastly, another hidden feature of this brand new map, I cannot figure out how to trigger this, but there is an artillery strike that kind of comes in across the map from time to time and rains down on an objective that you're trying to take. Now, I'm not sure if you have to activate it or whether it's just something that randomly happens. I'm not 100% sure here, but it does happen from time to time. And if you've managed to activate it, leave a comment down below and let other people know how to do it. I've seen it about three or four times in playing on the map this morning. And I was searching the map trying to find like a trigger point, maybe an MCOM station that you have to sort of arm to get the artillery to come in, but I couldn't find one. At the moment, I think it might be random unless somebody in the comments can tell me otherwise. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this new map is a premium and DLC only map coming to the They Shall Not Pass expansion. But from now until August, Premium Friends is active. So you can grab your non-premium buddies, get them into a party and get them involved on this map and the second night map, Priest Tetahur as well. That's coming out in July. I still think it's a big shame that these maps weren't released for free to all players, but Battlefield 1's DLC model is based on that season pass system, and that is unlikely to change during its life cycle. We can only hope that the next Battlefield title in 2018 follows the route of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and offers this live service instead, giving all players of the game the post-launch content and then funding the development with microtransactions for cosmetic items. Don't we all wish Battlefield 1 had some good soldier customization? 
So that's Nivelle Knights. The update went live today along with some tweaks to the base game as well, so I'll bring you the patch notes in another video very soon, once I'm able to get hold of them. But now you should be fully up to date with what DICE is bringing us this time. Let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments. And until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.